it can be really hard to avoid TV spoilers. Social media gives it away and leaks happen all the time, but what happens when the show you're watching spoils moments for the future? Ten different shows have used easter eggs and foreshadowing to reveal huge plot twists, character deaths, and moments you never expected. Relive these moments and see if you spotted them when they first aired. Zoe's Train Death On House of Cards, it was clear from the get-go how evil Frank Underwood could be. There is but one rule. Hunt or be hunted. It was important to establish this early on, and one of the biggest moments in season one to showcase his bad side was the death of Zoe. Zoe was not only Frank's part-time lover, but she helped leak stories to the press for Frank and help him move up to different positions of political power. Once he got all he could out of her, he shoved her off a subway platform and didn't think twice as her body was crushed by a train. The shocking moment seemingly came out of nowhere, but the Netflix series had several subtle clues foreshadowing the grim events. In an early episode, Frank quips to Zoe, Don't miss your train, Miss Barnes. It's the last one tonight. During another point, Frank directly states, I don't use people unless I can throw them away afterward. One of the most obvious clues came from when Frank was actually studying a map of the metro station when his wife asked him how he would deal with her. It was all planned from the beginning, and the harshness of it is what truly made it a shocker for viewers. I'd be happy if you just pretend to have a good time. Then, pretend I shall. Price's death in Mad Men. When Lane Price was first brought onto Mad Men, he was a budget-hungry worker, making cuts and saving the advertising company a lot of money. It ended up being a bad fate when money woes led to Price's downfall and eventual suicide. During an episode in Season 5, Price's body is discovered hanging in his office after he types a resignation letter. The shocking moment is hard to watch, especially as all of the characters react to the crazy scene. If fans paid attention to earlier episodes, then there were multiple clues that a death was coming, and a hanging in particular. Some dark humor was used to convey this moment, including a line in Price's office where he stated, I'll be here the rest of my life. Another season five episode showcased Don Draper drawing a noose on a notepad. The short doodling scene was not filler and ended up being Price's choice for his unfortunate suicide and death. It was hard not to imagine something bad happening after Price took out loans unknown to everyone else and desperately needed money to pay back expensive back taxes. The whole thing played out like a tragedy with some great acting from the show's leads. What's a Supreme? You're looking at her. The Coven leader is chosen. The Coven season of American Horror Story was focused on real witches. The whole season was built around choosing the new Coven leader. While many people assumed the leader was going to be one of the students, this was not the case at all. In a huge twist, Cordelia was chosen as the Coven leader and granted control of the Seven Wonders. This twist was built up all season long, but fans who understand the history of witchcraft could have seen this coming within the opening credits of the very first episode. Actress Sarah Paulson is an American Horror Story regular and played the part of Cordelia. During the opening credits, Paulson's name appears right as an image of Santa Muerte is shown. The Santa Muerte is also referred to as the Lady of the Seven Powers. While it may seem like a coincidence, the name was clearly placed there to give a huge clue to anyone who knew who Santa Huerte was. Even if you did figure it out, learning about the moment did not take away anything from watching the season of the show. Paulson really delivered as Cordelia, and it was clear she deserved those powers. I'M A MONSTER! <laughs> Buster's Lost Hand Arrested Development is a layered show filled with jokes, puns, and all types of hidden moments. Somewhere over the rainbow. The main joke which appears on the screen is typically followed by three or four subtle jokes at the same time. This is why it can be easy to miss small moments which hint at bigger things to come. One of the best examples of this is when Buster has his hand bit off by a seal in season two of the show. The moment was absurd and great, but it was made even better when you looked back and saw all of the signs it was going to happen. A flashback once revealed Buster starred in a play entitled The Trial of Captain Hook. While sitting outside an army office, Buster blocked a portion of the sign so it read, Arm Off. Gob once released the seal into the water and proclaimed, You're not gonna be hand-fed anymore! Buster's dad once even reached out, grabbed the hand, and asked, What if I never get a chance to reach out and touch that hand of his again? If these clues weren't enough, then one of the most obvious came when Buster won a stuffed seal in a claw machine. The 
Scully's brain cancer. After spending years helping victims and solving crimes, Agent Scully found herself to be the patient of a huge mystery. In season four of The X-Files, Scully gets diagnosed with brain cancer. The moment was a huge shock for fans and brought the show in a whole new direction as Scully and Mulder desperately tried to find the truth and a cure. Scully did not discover this revelation until more than halfway through season four, but there was a huge clue in just episode four. In the episode titled Unruh, a man kidnaps girls, ties them to dentist chairs, and tortures them. Through unforeseen circumstances, Scully is kidnapped while investigating and ends up getting trapped in the chair. During the scenes where she's confronted by the kidnapper, he taps directly on her forehead where the cancer is located. He then says he wants to get rid of the howlers in her head. The man clearly had some way of knowing Scully had cancer, but viewers did not pick up on this moment until later on. Once you see the x-ray of Scully's brain tumor, it reveals it is in the exact location of where the man pointed. Pinara's disease on Firefly when Firefly's brief season ended on Fox, there were a lot of unanswered questions fans wanted to know. Joss Whedon got the chance to clear up a lot of this with the film Serenity, but there was a lot more featured in the show fans realized later on. During the series, the character of Inara had a lot of mystery to her. She was known as a companion and provided love to various customers. Her story was a lot more than just a sleazy job, and fans can see this with the pilot episode of the series. During this episode, Inara opens up a hidden box to reveal a syringe and some type of liquid substance. While she never uses it, it does give a clue about her medical condition. As revealed later on through panels and small scenes, Inara was actually terminally ill. During one point, she subtly hints at this by saying she doesn't want to die at all. While the clues were small, they were there from the beginning and likely could have expanded if the show continued on. Joss Whedon has confirmed this fact and points all the way back to the Easter egg in the pilot episode to help set it up. And I have other amazing powers as well. Like what? <laughs> Fry sent to the future. The animated series Futurama built itself around a mystery right from the get-go. In the pilot episode of the series, the character Fry is accidentally frozen for a thousand years and not thought out for a long time. During the initial pilot, it seems like Fry accidentally falls back in his chair and into the frozen chamber. But it is not the case at all. In the fourth season, a flashback reveals Fry traveled back in time with Nibbler and went right to the moment before he was about to be frozen. The recreated scene showcases a whole new perspective as Fry enters the office to deliver pizza and beer. In this moment, Fry contemplates his future and decides to blow the chair backwards and cause himself to go back into the frozen chamber. If you think Futurama writers rewrote the history of this, it's not true. When watching the pilot episode again, you can clearly see the shadow of Nibbler as Fry flies back in his chair. This proves Futurama wasn't just some silly cartoon about space travel. The creators plotted and planned out moments years in advance. Dealing with time travel and future technology can be complicated, but the show's creators went above and beyond since the very first episode. Go, Penis! Help the puny children who need you! Wow, McBain is really buffed up! Hero McBain's Hidden Movie In the world of The Simpsons, the show is filled with sight gags, easter eggs, and plenty of hidden moments. While a lot of them may seem like throwaway jokes or funny pop culture gags, others can connect in ways you didn't even realize. One of these is the short movie featuring Hero McBain. During random scenes, news shows, movie trailers, and other outlets would showcase a clip from a Hero McBain movie. These clips may be years apart and often appeared on random episodes. If you actually edited all of the clips together, then it would form its own mini-movie and the full Hero McBain story. The animated tale takes a lot from action films like Die Hard and actually aired the scenes in chronological order. The story follows McBain as he tries to take down a corrupt senator named Mendoza. The quick-paced action features the death of McBain's partner, an infiltration into Mendoza's home, and McBain faking his own death so he can get revenge. In the final scene, Mendoza is dead and McBain gets the girl. The typical action formula features a lot of classic Simpsons humor and is a fun easter egg to enjoy while binge-watching the series. Friends Couch Reservation Television shows aren't supposed to represent everyday reality, but there's still things people will pick apart and criticize over and over again. On Friends, a lot of complaints come with the seating arrangements in the Central Perk Cafe. 
No matter what time of day it is, who is in the shop, or how crowded it is, the six friends always manage to get the large couch and chairs centered in the place. Sure, there's the episode with the bullies who take over the couch, but for a majority of the time, the couch belongs to Joey, Chandler, Ross, Rachel, Monica, and Phoebe. While most fans just accept this and suspend disbelief for a little bit, others may have realized exactly why they get to have these seats at any time they want to. During multiple scenes in the series, there is a small, reserved sign sitting on the table. The sign is hard to notice in the broadcast airings and reruns, but has been a lot easier thanks to Blu-ray and the Netflix releases. The sign gets moved around the center table a lot, but it's almost always there. Someone must have paid big bucks to get them the reserved table for ten whole seasons. He knew what would happen. From the moment he left, he knew, and he went anyway. Littlefinger's Death Predictions On Game of Thrones, death can come to anyone at any time. Unless you read the books for the earlier seasons, it was hard to predict whose death would come next. While sometimes it seemed random, other times there was plenty of foreshadowing to give viewers a slight hint at the terrible fate set to come. In just one scene, Littlefinger actually predicted the death of three different characters in upcoming episodes. What could have been taken as a light moment about how death can happen at any time became a powerful statement on the future. The actual line Littlefinger says is, People die at their dinner tables, they die in their beds, they die squatting over their chamber pots. Joffrey died off first, getting poisoned at the dinner table, the next to go was Shay, who died while in bed, and the last was Tywin, who actually died while sitting on a chamber pot, or as we typically call them, toilets. Not only did he predict the three deaths, but it is the exact order they happened in. It was a great moment of foreshadowing, forcing fans to pay attention during scenes when characters are not involved in some sort of crazy action sequence.